abundant life. Dear friends and family, our meditation today comes from Gospel according to John chapter 10 verses 1 to 11. Those who have studied language arts or literature know something called figures of speech. This enhanced the writing by giving literary work colors, dreams, depth and details. Some of the figures of speech are simile, metaphor, imagery, hyperbole, uh, euphemism or paradox or anticlimax, uh, metonymy, irony, humor or personification. There is so much more. Even though it is universal to human communication, it is a complex idea to deal with when we deal with multi-languages and multi-cultures. Remember, the Bible is written in the languages such as Greek, Hebrew, Aramic, and uh, uh, we don't use any of those as our primary language today. Rather, we use or read in the English language. Or in my case, I read English and my uh, native language or my mother tongue called Malayalam. When we deal with the biblical period or biblical cultures, we have Mesopotamian, Canaanites, Egyptian, Hittites, Assyrian, Babylonian, Persian, and Greco-Roman world. And uh, today we read it from a multicultural, multilinguistic context. Again, as we all read the text from uh, as a postmodern readers, we re don't read it from the context in which the text is written. In the English language, we have popular idioms or figures of speech, such as uh, time to take a cat nap, I have to bite my tongues, uh, he put uh, all his egg in one basket, I was, uh, I was falling in love, time for me to hit the books, I ate hot dog for dinner. Today we use phrases like unseen enemy referring to a virus. If we are not connected to everyday news for the last uh, two months, we have no idea what we are referring to. I was wondering what will be the, you know, the post World War generation will be thinking when we say the word unseen enemy. In our reading today, there are many figures of speech that can be named and described. We go absolutely wrong when we take these words literally. Due to lack of understanding regarding the metaphors, figures of speech, it can lead us to make uh, you know, uh, authentic claims and beliefs that the Bible contains errors and discrepancies by some of the people who don't like the Bible or who don't believe in God. In our reading today, we have uh, metaphors like the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. I am the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And people are referred as a good sheep. We have personifications like I am the gate of the sheep. We have analogy uh, like uh, or referring to likeness, attribute to a period of different times or even in history. Or we have comparisons between noble shepherd and uh, uh, an unfaithful shepherd. When we read God, John's Gospel, we have hyperbole, an exaggeration of the size, power and meaning. In the confession of the Samaritan woman, uh, she says, He told me all that I have ever did. Uh, you know, in, when we refer to uh, other texts in John, we say all the land of Judea and all from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River. Use of personifications and metaphors like uh, I am the door, I am the living bread, you are the salt of the earth. Personifications, which means attributes of uh, living things are ascribed to an inanimate object. When we read Genesis chapter 4.10 and uh, he said, What thou hast done, the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. In Luke chapter 19 verse 40 we read, If these uh, should uh, keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. There is a lot of understanding when we deal with figures of speech used in the Bible or biblical by the biblical authors.
Let me leave that thought with you for your further meditation today. It is hard to study the figures of speech when we study the ancient text, unlike the postmodern poetry or postmodern writing. If you like to drive deeper, please study the figures of speech used in this particular text today or the liturgical text of today. This uh, Sunday is known historically as a Good Shepherd Sunday. We are going to talk about abundant life through an honorable or noble death. The term abundant life or having a super abundance comes from the biblical verse in this passage, John chapter 10 verse 10b, or from our reading today. I've come that they may have life and have it in the fullness or, uh, or abundant life. It refers to fullness of life emotionally, relationally, and a life in its abounding uh, fullness of joy and strength for mind, body, and soul. This is a contrast to the feeling of lack, emptiness, hopelessness, dissatisfaction. While many people equate poverty with spirituality, sickness with God's punishment and discipline, coronavirus or COVID-19 with God's punishment for disobedience, the text today talks about abundant life. I see this as a binary opposite. Some of the so-called prosperity gospel preachers use this biblical idea to present the word of faith, seed or faith that start with a seed, prosperity gospel, health and wealth gospel, name it and claim it gospel, and so forth and so forth. The adjectives such as noble, ideal, no, uh, moral, true or good describes the good shepherd because for John, the shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep and he knows the sheep. In the socio-demographical context of honor and shame culture, the one who dies as noble is worthy of public praise. The American society also loves honor and shame. When we talk about our national heroes, we are talking about noble death. In the Greek or Athenian oratory, in the history present the idea of noble death in variety of ways. It refers to easy, good, noble or famous. Or a life might end well. In the ancient uh, funeral rhetoric, some death labeled noble because it was voluntary. Jesus uh, for the third or fourth time state in this text today that he lays down his life voluntarily or willingly. In verse 11 it says the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I lay down my life for my sheep. Verse 17. The father loves me because I lay down my life. Verse 18. And I have power to lay it down for others. I am the gate of the good, uh, I am the gate of the sheepfold. Here the gate is used as figures of speech, as a personification. Even though the door does not have life of its own, Jesus, the living savior, acts as an inanimate object. Doesn't seem at first a very personal image, a gate of the sheepfold. For someone who is seeking a way out of prison, slavery, seeking entry into a place of well-being, there is nothing of greater importance than a gate. An open gate, there are many similar images in the New Testament, such as the door, the doorkeeper, the key, the way. I am the way and life. The image or the metaphor is also very powerful when it comes to inclusion and exclusion. The key symbolizes power and might. Power always can work for or work for or against us. When I work in another nation, I saw a custodian of a large building having hundreds of keys in his hand. And I made a comment that you are the most powerful person in this place. And he attests to that because, yes, of course, I have the keys to enter into any place in this building. When we are in the airports, you know, entering into a new country, we have to go through the entry point or go through the doors, go through the immigration checkup. The one who has the key is the most powerful person. When Jesus said, all who come before me are thieves, and robbers, and I'm sure he did not me did not include Abraham, David, Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, or other eighth-century prophets. 
There is an inclusion and exclusion prevalent in the text. When we study the intertestament period, the first century Judaism, we know there were many contemporaries who deserve to be described as spiritual thieves and robbers. There are many who claim himself or themselves to be the Messiah. When we study the intertestament period and the first century Judaism, we know there were many contemporaries who deserve to be described as spiritual thieves and robbers. There are many who claim themselves to be the Messiah, the Savior. Within and outside of Christianity, we do see people who sound like look like shepherds but they rob us of our spirituality and our true identity and our true connectivity with the true God. Last week I talked about giving our spiritual ownership to God or Jesus and I'm sure this is, uh, this is relevant while we explore this text today. The idea of sheep used as a plural without a shepherd is found throughout the Hebrew literature. Isaiah, was Isaiah has a description of the people as sheep gone astray. Jeremiah uses the motif of uh, uh, bad shepherds. Zechariah describes the people as sheep, scattered and shepherdless. The psalmist describes himself as a single lost sheep. In our world today, where many try to become uh, that shepherd, Many try to become, replace Jesus. We have an unseen enemy robbing our peace, joy and prosperity. As a binary opposite, we also have a good shepherd who gives his life uh, for this noble cause to bring abundant life possible. Abundant life is not without its shadows. We uh, embrace them. That will transform our life and become energized by them. Without beautiful gate, we are doomed to the empty repetition of yesterday, not the full life of today. Without the gate of transformation, we remain uh, forever in fear of change. When God is uh, standing on our gate or when he truly uh, becomes the gate, he ha a risk is small and reward is great. If you take Christ out of Christianity, if you take the exclusive claims of Christ out of the Bible, it is dangerous and it is deadly. Salvation found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Jesus the gate, the only gate, the only shepherd, the only noble savior. The one who comes so that we can be trusted and he can be trusted with his sheep. The abundant life is only possible through Jesus Christ. Uh, the I am sayings of Christ in John Gospel point to his unique divine and uh, identity and his divine identity and his divine purpose. It is not uh, talking about a door but the door. It's not one of the door that we have many in our room, in our house, in our church. No, it is talking about the door, the only one through which we can enter. Shepherds are the providers, guiders, and they are protectors and uh, constant companions of the sheep. This is why David in Psalms 23 tells us of a shepherd who makes us uh, to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil, for you, the shepherd, you are with us. I'm glad because as a follower of Christ, we have a shepherd who protects, provides and leads us. First Peter chapter 5 verse 4 says, when the chief shepherd appears, we will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Dear friends and family, it is hard to understand all the metaphors used in the Bible. But I challenge you to have an attempt to study at least the metaphors or the figures of speech used in this text. The personifications used in this text. The comparisons between a noble 
a shepherd and a unfaithful shepherd. May God bless you. And I'm glad I and you, we have a good shepherd who is in heaven waiting for us. It's not only in heaven, but he is there with us in our struggle, in our challenges, in our trouble, every, in our everyday life. May God bless you with his words. Let's pray. Lord, give us a life that you promised, an abundant life, a life full of joy, happiness, prosperity, health and wealth. God, we need your mercy and your peace, your love, your grace and your wisdom. You know, nothing can take it away from us. Lord, I declare, instead of fear and anxiety, I need an abundant life that you provided, that you promised to give us. I claim it in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh God, that the true happiness may come into my heart, come into the heart of everyone who prays with me today. Lord, in our social media platform, in our virtual worship, there may be many others who are in our community watching us. Lord, I pray for everyone. We ask your Lord to protect our community, protect each and every one of us, protect our family, protect our children, protect our health workers. Lord, we claim prosperity, blessings, peace and joy and happiness in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have a good shepherd, a good Messiah, a noble shepherd who gave his life for us, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. I pray for everyone who are praying with me today. I ask you, O oh Lord, to protect them, bless them and help them. Be with them and guide them. In Jesus' precious name, I offer this prayer. Amen and Amen.